So as in, in our city's mission statement, as you can see, um, this is pretty much going to be s similar with our, our mission and our vision and our stairs uh, due to the Carlson, uh, due to our, um, thank you, our strategic plan that's being um, undergone at this time. So we'll just skip through that. Oops. All right, there we go. All right, and obviously our stairs approach, which is our core values with our service, our, our teamwork, our accountability, our innovation, and our respect and our stewardship, which is also our uh, fiscal responsibility. These are our core values that we look at and use in our day-to-day -day activities, as, and especially with our implementing of uh, DEIB. DEIB is in our, our stairs and our core values. So having said that, we're going to talk a little bit about our state and city constraints. As you can see, our state, state law, our uh, tax levy limits, our state shared revenue, our city, city's budget parameters, our expenditure restraint, which you hear us talk about quite a bit, our, which is also ERP, and our minimum fund balance, which we have a, uh, a limit at this time of 25%. So Ehlers did review this in, in quite detail. Um, in our last meeting with them. So as we move on to our state shared um, revenue, we basically want to talk about how that's gone up to $628,062 overall reduction in, the, in the, the past six years. And again, this is six years versus five years, which you've seen in past, um, past presentations. So our 2023 allocations did increase $97,833. Our utility aid payments um, reduction is postponed due to the Edgewater or Alliant um, uh, facility continuing operations. And that's planned through 2025. Now I do wanna make sure everybody understands that's planned. That doesn't necessarily mean that it, it could come sooner. It was supposed to close this November if we recall, it, but it was pushed out to 2025. So again, that just means that we didn't lose the money that when it closes will happen. So again, just to keep, it, keep that in the forefront. Main drivers of increase is the expenditure restraint program where we had $83,149. Um, that's more than last year, uh, but we do need to stay in this program at this time. So I know there's been discussion, should we get out of the expenditure restraint? Not at this time. So here's a, a nice graph for you to see. It allows you to better understand where we were in 2018 and how we dropped significantly from 18 to 19. Again, that was the um, Alliant Edgewater where they closed down a, a portion of it and we lost over a half a million dollars in revenue. In 2020, we obviously you can see we went up or went continued to go down just a little bit. And then 2021 and in uh, 2023, we we're expecting to go up just a little bit and that is by a small increase of $97,000. So expenditure restraint program and tax levy limits, which is kind of the, the teeter-totter of Sheboygan, right? So a balancing act to stay uh, within limitations relative to, our, to both, both areas, the, obviously the expenditure restraint and the, and the levy. And the, again, the levy is set by state statute. Calculations were very, um, were thoroughly vetted in this process. And our expenditure restraint program, um, ERP, allows, allows the increase of the general fund expenditures by 60% of the, per, of the percentage increase of the city's net new construction and allowable CI, uh, CPI. Again, in 2023, our budget uh, state confirmed a 7.7% .7 allowed increase in expenditure per CPI. City's allowable increase for 2022 is 8.5. We could increase, but the general fund expenditures and levy supported funds are in that 8.5. Used to saying next. Tax levy limits, the, the, state, the state law restricts the percentage increase of uh, city's tax levy based on previous year uh, tax levy our net new construction, which was significantly lower this last year, um, our actual TID closures, which we closed six TIDs, if you recall, our TID uh, subtractions, and our debt service levy. 
which won't happen until next year for the TIDs. Thank you. <laughs> so our tax levy, which in, you can see it here in our, in our graph here, you can see the differences. So what, what we did was we put it into general, our debt, our capital, library, transit. And I just want to call out that in 2022 and 2023, transit was at a zero. That was because of the fact that transit had CARES Acts through ARPA and that, and that those CARES Act, Acts money, the money from that uh, that we normally allocate to transit was put into the capital, um, capital fund. We will need to replace that in the upcoming years. Again, CARES Act money was only for a, a short period of time. So you can see that the general fund actually has gone down in tax levy or gone up, I'm sorry, um, just a little bit, uh, $222,301. Our debt, again, that fluctuates depending um, on the principal and interest payments that we have year over year. Our capital, uh, that stayed the same, so that's z uh, zero difference. And then the library, which actually ended up uh, receiving the most um, from um, more than general fund, you can see they, they actually went up $264,057. And this, all of this does include, in the 2022 numbers, it does include the uh, 115,000 for the library for the wage study difference. So moving forward, here's a better, better view of it from a, um, from a graph perspective. You can see the breakdown in property tax levy is and amongst all of the funds. Moving forward, our assessed tax rate. Again, this is a little bit in the in fluctuation right now. You can see in 2021 to 2022, again, the decrease is due to the reevaluation. You can see that the levy spread spread out um, on the larger city values. So again, as we talked about our tax base during the revaluation, because the city actually grew in value, the mill rate will actually drop. So the per thousand per homeowner actually will reduce. So we're anticipating, and again, this is just, right now it's preliminary, we're looking at going from $10.56 in 2021 to $8.07, but again, please remember, final assessment numbers um, are not available from the Department of Revenue. So again, it's kind of, it's gonna fluctuate. That's why this is a preliminary presentation today. Um, so we do need final assessments um, from the Department of Revenue to, to lock it in. So 2023 employee wage um, and benefits. So the following wage, uh, wage adjustments are currently built into the 2023 um, budget. As you can see, the um, fire union, 2.5% increase, and the police officer and supervision unions, they have a 1% uh, one, uh, 1 increase in January. And then they also have a 2% increase in June of 20, June 25th. Um, again, so that equates to a 3%, but uh, the cost to the city is about a 2.5%. Two and a, two and a we are in the middle of union, union negotiations with transit, so those are still ongoing. And then non-reps, we are um, looking at a 2% COLA, cost of living adjustment, and a potential one-step increase is what we're looking to, we're planning on uh, accomplishing. So again, when we look at the fire union and the police unions, those negotiations are gonna again start up in 2023. Uh, we will be at the, the last year of the negotiations or the contracts. So 2023 employee wage benefits, the following benefits adjustments are currently built, um, built into the 2023 budget as you can see. There's no change in health or dental ins uh, insurance premiums. We were able to negotiate and hold those costs this year and actually um, improve some of the benefits that are received by our, our team members. Wisconsin retirement system uh, pension increases. This is basically to help, you, help everybody understand that um, in 2023, you'll see a 1.7%, um, which basically is a contribution of 18.1% from the city. Um, again, police is increased by 1.2, non-rep is 0.3, and 
and then employee contributions overall are increased by 0.30% of wages. So again, we pay into pension the 18.1, the 13.2, and the 16.8 as an example. I also do want to point out that the city will continue to give the HSA con contribution um, for 2023, and that was $1,500 for family and $750 for single. So that's very beneficial to the employees. 2023 personal uh, personnel changes. The only uh, personnel changes that we have at this time are two additional positions budgeted for the, um, the Uptown Social. I do want to point out that these are positions that were part of the TO, so a table of organization. They were not budgeted in 2022 um, financially because of the fact with the new construction of the facility, we didn't need the positions filled because we weren't going to be having the facility available. So these positions are part of the organizational uh, table, of, um, table um, but not budgeted. So this is an engagement coordinator for Uptown Social and a custodian um, part-time for Uptown Social, but we also had a position at Public Works that was part-time, so it's going to create one full-time position. At, the, at this time, all other positions, including vacancies, are built into the budget, but will be reviewed as we, as we move forward with the budgeting process. So 2023 preliminary budget as of 10-3-2022, so that's today. Uh, so we do have a deficit, and that's what we all need to understand. We have a $192,580 uh, deficit uh, currently in the general fund, so general funds. So that's the adjustment can be made um, to other, other funds. Again, we don't know exactly where we're going to find that $192,000, so we didn't want to be moving it around much. There are some assumptions. The uh, um, ambulance and municipal court fees move to general fund. Carlson Detman wage study implementation is included in this. Information technologies, that'll be a service uh, changes to other departments, remains flat. General fund contingency uh, is also being decreased by $250,000. And the increment from the TID closures uh, transferred to affordable housing fund. So those are all included in our preliminary um, budget so far. So additional 2023 outstanding items, Department of Transportation. Um, again, this is what we need to complete the budget. So the Department of Transportation, the connecting highway, highway aids, the general transportation aids, those should be coming in any day. They tend to take a little bit of time from the, from the state. Um, the state of Wisconsin Department of Revenue, uh, manufacturing um, assessed values, those assist us in the tax rate at the end of October. Hopefully we'll have those um, locked in. And the final, final balancing of budget, uh, policy requires a balanced budget with no fund balance use. Again, this is very important. Um, we, the city, cannot have an unbalanced budget. So no matter what, and we cannot use fund balance for operations. So in other words, operating expenses cannot be covered by fund balance. So even though we got money in the piggy bank, we cannot use that for operating funds, for operations. Yeah, that's an adopted policy. So moving forward, uh, fund balance, the city's goal uh, to maintain a fund balance, fiscally responsible safety net. Our target is 25% of budgeted general fund expenditures. Um, our 2023 proposed budget, um, again, our exceeded uh, target of 34.8% of the budgeted general fund expenditures, and we've talked about that in the past. We are consistent with Moody's credit service recommendations, so we're doing very well from that perspective. And here is a fund balance unassigned. So this graph helps um, everyone here to better understand where we are when we look at 2020, 2021, 2022, and the projected um, budget of 2023. So you can see um, that for 2023, we're projecting a fund balance of 15614 Again, we'll see what happens in the closure of 2022. We tend to have a little bit of overflow from, from one year to the next, but right now we're projecting it to be around the $15 million. 
And uh, the red line is basically a representation of where we need to be with our policy. Moving forward, uh, debt service fund notables. So property tax levy increased, uh, well, levy increase is $42,895. We still maintain our Moody's AA2. And again, AA2 is the best rating that the city of Sheboygan can have with our population and economics. 2023 planned GO debt um, issuance, which is our general obligation borrowing. We have $4,321,000 uh, $4, for approved 2023 uh, capital improvements projects and uh, $2,126,500 2, is the increase over 2022. So in 2022, we use general fund balance towards projects to reduce the debt issuance amount. So debt service fund, as of uh, December 31st, you can see uh, where we are with that, our net, uh, net debt outstanding from 2020 to 2021, 22, and 23. You can see that our, our net debt outstanding is at uh, 58 million. This includes payoffs and new planned issuance. So we are compliant at a 30.05% um, for the city. So that's a very good thing. So budget next steps. Our current budget summary documents uh, to be presented at the committee, um, committee meetings the week of October 10th through the 12th. We will be doing adjustments after final numbers are received from the Department of Revenue and Department of Transportation. Um, proposed budget with amendments uh, to be considered at the Committee of the Whole. So we'll be presenting the final budget at that point. And then we'll be uh, publishing and distribution of the 2023 proposed budget and brief at that time. So I know everybody's sitting on the edge of their chair. They're so excited and hopefully you're still with me. But this is our um, budget update at this time for the, for the council. Any questions? Otherwise, I'll turn it back over to um, Alder Feldy. Um, Roberta Fulby paninsky Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> when do we expect to get the numbers from the Department of Revenue? I heard about transportation, but when, when do we get those for real? Sure, so the Department of Transportation, I actually was thinking we'd get it today. Okay. Um, I got an email from them earlier, but it had the wrong attachment on it. So now we're waiting for them to send the correct attachment. So I'm assuming it will be in the next few days here. The Department of Revenue, uh, that will be closer to the end of the month. They take quite a while to get those manufacturing assessments to us. We can finish the budget without the Department of Revenue piece, but for the council to have all the information related to tax rate and the impact on the residents here, that's why we say it's kind of contingent on that because if you tell us that the tax rate um, adjustment for 2023 is too high, uh, we would have to go back to kind of the drawing board and make sure that we make the adjustment to get to a tax rate that's acceptable. Okay. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you. Um, so the contingency funds are going to go down to only fifty thousand dollars. Is that? Uh, the Perella, can you talk sorry to for that? Thank you. Sorry, Thank you. sorry, sorry. So contingency funds go down to only fifty thousand uh, dollars. What is that fund altogether? And so what's the percentage that goes down? And how bad is that? What are the implications of that? So the contingency line item in the budget is actually a planned use of fund balance for if it's one-time projects or emergency type situations that might happen throughout the year. For example, the uh, pipe that burst at the police department utilized contingency, which was fund balance, to pay for those repairs so that the police department didn't have to come up with thousands of dollars from within their operating budget. So for 2022, I, and actually, I believe in 2021, it was a million dollars of planned use. 2022 was 750,000, so now we're going down to 500,000. Um, I believe, and I can have Administrator Wolf jump in if he would like, but I believe it's the thought that we have had several projects that have gotten taken care of, so the, 
the substantial amount that we've been having um, budgeted for that in case of emergency or those one-time projects, um, that has been getting reduced because we have been completing quite a few of those items. So it is actually a positive in a way because we aren't going to be using fund balance on these one-time items. We're going to be having that fund balance available for other things such as capital projects. Thank you. And then will you share the presentation, please? Sure. Thank you. Any others? <laughs> 